Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. O Zion, to the Son of God. Behold, your righteous King is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey. O Zion, to the Son of David. He shall speak peace to the nations, and his rule shall be from sea to sea. The Lord of Lords will sound the trumpet and will overcome enemies like the mighty desert wind. Hosanna to the Son of David. On that day, the Lord of our God will save his people as a shepherd saves his sheep. En aquel día el Señor nuestro Dios salvará a su pueblo como un pastor salva a sus ovejas. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let, him, let us worship the Lord. Adoremos al Señor. Thank you. 
That's what I want you to think about this week. It's no longer celebrating. But also, I want to challenge you. I want to give you homework, like Pastor Sherry gives all of them homework. I want you to have some homework this week. I want you to figure out what happens between now when we celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem to when it's Easter. Because we kind of go from today to Easter and we forget about what happens in between. I want you all to think about what happens in between and come tell me next week something you learned that happened between when Jesus came on a donkey and when he rose again on Easter. Okay? I want, well, you can come tell me later. Okay. Well, you can come tell me later or I'll see you during the week at school. Okay? All right. Let's think about this. All right. So we're going to do this. When you leave today, I want everybody to take a rock as a reminder. You like rocks? So you can, the rock can remind you of Jesus and all that he has done. And that we know that nothing can stop us from celebrating Jesus. Because even the rocks would cry out if everybody else is silent. Okay, let's have a prayer. Good morning, God. Good morning, God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For Jesus. For Jesus. He does so much for me. He does so much for me. And I want to. And I want to. Celebrate and party. Because he is awesome. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For today. That we can always celebrate your great love. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. And helping me to grow. To love you more. To love you more. Amen. Buenos dias, good morning. Come on, everybody with me, please. We are celebrating a very special Sunday today. Come on, put up. Let's use this piece. As Pastor Sherry Jackson said, we just remember, but we are remembering that Jesus came one time in Jerusalem. And when he came, people loud said, a ver, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. The scripture lesson for us today, we found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 40 and 41. We read the word of God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph, and Solomon. They had been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. Many other women who had come with him to Jerusalem were also there. La lección de la Escritura se encuentra en el Evangelio de Marcos, capítulo 15, versículos 40 y 41, acorde a la nueva traducción viviente. Algunas mujeres miraban de lejos, entre ellas María Magdalena, María la madre de Santiago, la menor, el menor de José y Salomé. 
eran seguidores de Jesús y lo habían cuidado mientras estaba en Galilea. También estaban allí muchas otras mujeres que habían venido con él a Jerusalén. Esta es la palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Gracias, Señor. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we respond to the word read today and prepare ourselves to hear the message that will be brought, we're thinking today about the women who are at the cross. And there's a beautiful hymn in our hymnal that talks about the women as being the first ones in some very special situations that God called women to be the first to be witnessed to. Um, the, the birth of Jesus, the news of Jesus is coming. The first, the first missionary evangelist, the Samaritan woman at the well. And the women who were the first to the tomb on Sunday morning. And so I'm going to invite you as uh, the band and I um, sing this piece to you called The First One Ever, that you just um, would meditate on these words and meditate on the, the special the special gifting and the special place that God has given them in our history as Christians.
Gracious, holy, and loving God, as we come to worship today, we pray that you will open our hearts, that you will open our minds, you will open our spirits, so that we might receive all that you give to us this day. We pray that all that we offer in return, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, service, our witness, our word proclaimed, honor you, give praise to you, and continue your story for the world. This prayer we offer you in the strength and power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus and all the church gathered said, Amen. Amen. So friends, as you have heard many, many times so far this morning, we turn the corner this day to Easter. It is the beginning of Holy Week for communities of faith around our world, and we are also reminded that the journey to Easter is one, as Psalm 23 reminds us, taken through the shadow of the valley of death. If you've been reading the Passion narrative throughout this season, you may remember the observation made in the 50th verse of Mark 14 that after the Garden of Gethsemane, after the betrayal and the arrest of Jesus, Mark makes a statement that all of them, all who followed Jesus, all who had been with him throughout his life and his ministry, all of them deserted and fled. Well, friends, I would offer you today, maybe not all. For after the interrogation trial, if one could call it that, the journey to Golgotha, the spectacle of the crucifixion, we read in today's lesson that there were women who remained. Now, names are Mary Magdalene, Jesus' mother, Mary, Mrs. Zebedee, you met one of her sons here last week. Salome and other Marys. It depends all for each of the Gospels. There are different groupings of the women who stayed. Now, Matthew, Mark, and Luke suggest that the women took their place among others and watched from a distance. But if you look at the Gospel of John, you will find that they stayed much closer. For it is John who tells us that they were at the foot of the cross. And it seems most fitting that the women offer this witness to the crucifixion. That's what we have been doing over the course of Lent. Remember, if you have been with us throughout these many weeks, then we have looked at the witness of Simon of Cyrene, of the thieves on the cross, of the soldiers, thank you, Pastor David, of John the Beloved, thank you, Ken, and today, the women. And it seems fitting that the women are able to offer an equal and compelling witness because they were present in Jesus' story as Sarah has just sung from the cradle to the grave. Amy Jill Levine offers that the women were both supporters of Jesus and beneficiaries of his healings and his exorcisms all throughout his mission. In Galilee, Peter's mother-in-law, whom Jesus healed of a fever, ministered to him. Jesus restores a hemorrhaging woman to both health and ritual purity by stopping her bleeding. Jesus resuscitates a 12-year-old girl. He raises up a woman bent double. He exercises seven demons from Mary Magdalene and from the daughter of a Gentile woman. Martha and Mary. How many of you are familiar with the names Martha and Mary in the Gospels? Well, Martha engages in ministry similar to Peter's mother-in-law. It is, it is the Greek word di, diakonin, or deacon. While her sister Mary listens to Jesus' teaching, and in John's Gospel, Martha confesses Jesus to be the Messiah while Mary anoints his feet. As Sarah sang to us, Jesus engages with the Samaritan woman at the well and with the daughters of Jerusalem on the way to the cross. Elizabeth is with Mary prior to Jesus' birth. The prophet Anna greets him in the temple. Friends, it seems most fitting for us to lift up this day that women are a part of Jesus' story again. 
from the cradle to the grave. And if we consider their witness, not only in that day of staying close to Jesus in his final most dire hours, but throughout all of their encounters with him, we see courage, we see charisma, we see problem solving, we see tenacity and strength, compassion, mercy, resilience, faithfulness, hope, and love, to name but a few. And friends, just as they had specific encounters that engaged them in new ways with ministry to Jesus, then I know that I can claim that for myself as well. About 20 years ago, I had been asleep for about 45 minutes, and I received a phone call from one of my church members who was a dear friend. And she advised me that her mother had attempted to take her own life and was on her way to the hospital. So I stumbled out of bed after about 45 minutes sleep and I left my home in Salisbury and I headed up to Winston-Salem and met the ambulance and her family as they arrived. Friends, we spent that night in confusion, in loss, in grief, in tears, in laughter, in prayer, in anger, and throwing things, and reclaiming things. If you could just imagine with me for just a moment what those 12 hours would have been like. Absolute and total chaos. And did I tell you that I was managing all of this on 45 minutes later? Well, the next day, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, approximately 13 or so hours after her mother had attempted, her mother succumbed to life in this world. And so we prayed and we made next arrangements. And I got in my car for the drive home. And I pulled up to the gate to leave the parking garage. You all have been in a parking garage gate, right? And at the time, at the hospital, you could write on the back of your parking ticket your name in the church you served. And you could give it to them, and they wouldn't charge you for parking. There are perks to being a pastor after all. <laughs> so I wrote my name, and I wrote my church, and I handed it to the ticket man, the, the little man, I always, I, I, I don't know why, but the, the little man in the boots, you know who that is, right? There you get with the little man in the boots. And so I sat there and I waited for the gate to lift up. And the gentleman looked at me and looked at my ticket and looked at me and looked at my ticket and looked at me and looked at my ticket. I'm like, okay, this is not that confusing and my handwriting is not that poor. And the gentleman said, may I ask you a question? I said, sure. Because you know when someone is, is gearing to ask you a question. And he said, I don't understand how you can do what you say you do here. I said, I beg your pardon? He said, well, my, my friend, and he pointed to a lady who was in another ticket booth, a little bit farther down in a different lane. We have Bible study every, every week during our lunch break. And it clearly states that women cannot pastor churches. <laughs> Why do you think you can do this? Now, did I tell you I'm operating on 45 minutes late? And my dear friend has lost her mother. And I have been present with her family for 14 hours on 45 minutes sleep. I can tell you there were some very unkind and unchristian and uncharitable words that went through my mind. I will be honest and confess that. But friends, in that moment, I had a quickening. Do y'all know what quickening is? Now, if you're a mama, you know what quickening is, right? It's that moment where you are carrying your child, and there is that moment when there is a movement, a flutter, a kick. Something inside you moves, 
and tells you that life is here and it ain't going nowhere. It's a quickening. Well, friends, in that moment, I experienced a quickening. And I was able to look at that man with the true compassion of Christ. Because I know, trust me, it was not mine. And I said, my dear friend, when you and your friend next meet for Bible study, would you do me a kind favor? I said, I need you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew. And in the Gospel of Matthew, there are several chapters referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. Everybody's heard of the Sermon on the Mount. And I need you to turn to the seventh chapter, and somewhere around, I think it's, ver I don't even know which verse it is right now. I've got it written down in my notes up there. But it goes like this. It sounds a bit like Dr. Seuss. It says that a good tree bears what? And a bad tree bears? A good tree cannot bear? And a bad tree can't bear? You will know them by their? And my dear friend, that is what I base my ministry on each and every day. That and that alone, Christ's calling to me, the strength and power of the Holy Spirit, and the people with whom I have worked and served and loved to see that I am making a difference in their lives because their lives are being drawn ever closer to Christ. So, my dear sir, if you would be ever so kind, please press whatever button is needed in that booth and lift up the gate. I would like to go home. Well, friends, he sounded a bit like you do now. He had no response. He just pressed the button. And I drove through the gate. And I went home. Friends, see, to me, lifting up the witness of the women on this Palm Sunday, I need you to raise your palms one more time. Because my hope is somebody's asked me, so what is Palm Sunday about? Nobody knows what palms are for. Nobody lays their capes down in the road anymore. What are we teaching anymore? Friends, I believe this. Palm Sunday is nothing short of the opportunity for a quickening. You, we, all of us, the choir, everyone in this room gets to decide today if you will remain bystanders, if you will remain scoffers, if you will remain one of those people who there's a party going on and you're not even aware of anything. Palm Sunday and the gift of it is to offer all of us the opportunity for a quickening. How will you respond when pressed? How will you respond when the world is in need of a witness? How will you respond when someone challenges your very life, your very call, what you think you're supposed to be about? How will you respond? Because friends, each of us will have to respond. See, Amy Jill Levine goes on and she writes this. She says, the women of the cross prompt us to reflect on the other women in the Gospels, and they point us forward. They point us forward, she writes, to parents who lose their children to violence, to disciples determined to carry on the good news, to insiders, to outsiders, and more. So friends, the invitation for today is to look at the witness of these women in Scripture. And the women in your own life, the women who have pointed you to the cross and have helped keep you there. And to decide what your response will be for the world.
world spins on, Laura Fenucci, a lovely author, writes, but the women stay. Because think of this, my friends, imagine how different the story might have been if the women had not gone to the tomb while others slept, had not discovered the body gone, had not listened to the angels, had not run to tell the stunning noon, the news of Christ's resurrection that changed everything. From birth to death, women are called to stay faithful then and now. And friends, if I might leave you with anything, you would not be here today without them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all the church said. Amen. Amen. So friends, in response to the word, sung beautifully, can we thank our musicians for the offering that they need to us today? To our worship leaders, can we thank them also for their faithfulness? For our presence here, for the gifts that we offer and give. But I pray that in this moment, besides offering and listening to beautiful music, you may pray for that moment of quickening and choose who and how you will follow. Now, I need some assistance with this, so I know Trick's going to come, I know EJ's going to come, so I need two folks on this side. I know Isla's going to come, so I need somebody to come help Isla. Uh, well, sweet, you've got plenty of them over here. Come on, Chris, you can help, come help your sister. You can, you, you can help. You can help EJ. And let's pray. Gracious, holy, and loving God, for the opportunity to respond, for the opportunity to hear your voice, for the opportunity to stay, for the opportunity to claim the witness given by so many that has brought us to this place. We give you thanks and praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, be they large, be they small. And if someone is able to give nothing more, we thank you for their presence with us today, and we pray that you will continue to bless them as you richly bless us all. Use and multiply these gifts as you, as you use us to the furthering of your kingdom. And the church said, Amen.
pray. Dear gracious Lord of all, we humbly come to you this day to offer our eternal thanks for all your blessings of family, of our faith community, of our ability to serve you. Most of all, the gift of your Son and the salvation his sacrifice provided to us if we will just believe and follow him. Please accept our gifts of tithes and offering for your glory. Use them to bring others to know you fully. Let us now join in the Lord's Prayer in the language of our choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
more time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told them that might have to be the second time. But I'll just make it up as I go along. Thanks. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. 